Greetings, it's George the Fragrance Apprentice here with, finally, a top 10 winter list. I looked at my um, video feed the other day and realized I hadn't done a top 10 winter list in two years. That is not acceptable anymore. We're gonna, we're gonna do, we're gonna, we're gonna make it work today. We're gonna make it all worth it. And I think I've, I think I've made the best list of all time. Are you jaded by top 10 lists these days? Especially seasonal ones. Because to tell you the truth, so am I. But don't worry, this is the best. Hashtag strength, hashtag no weakness, hashtag Treyway, hashtag I'm not bothered about my subscriber count, that's why I dedicated a whole fucking video to it. This fragrance community is becoming a living meme. A living, breathing meme. And no, I'm not PewDiePie, but I did live in Brighton for two years, so I think that makes me qualified to do this. 10 out of 10 fragrance community, best meme of 2019 ever. But yes, I think that this is a really good list, and I'll tell you why. Because I was away for a year, wasn't I? And I was away traveling, you know? And I saw so much, my friends. I saw the beautiful beaches of Santorini. I did yoga on the nourishing backwaters of Kerala, India. I ate wonderful and exotic foods in the old town of Bucharest, capital of Romania. And I went to Derby. It's a shithole. Don't go to Derby. So yes, after all of that traveling, all of that pontification, all of uh, that exploring, not just the world and myself, but the world of fragrances, I have got one of the best top 10 winter lists, foolproof, bulletproof of all time. You're gonna love it. I've really been into spices this year, and if I'm honest, really well handcrafted stuff. That's what I want. I want talent, I want intricacy, I want stuff that's well put together and that is really pleasing and stuff that I know the perfumier has thought about. He's got a vision, he's got a story to tell, and that's what he's trying to do. You're gonna get some wild, fantastic fragrances on this list, so let's just get into it. Oh, and by the way, listen, I know this is a really chilled out kind of setup. It's not on location or one of my more elaborate shoots, but you know, it's bloody cold outside. I just want to sit in with the fire, with my cup of tea, and have a good, lovely, calm time with you, the viewer. But having said that, I know that you love it when I do the cinematic stuff. I love it when I do the cinematic. We both love it when I do the cinematic stuff. So, to please us both, here is a triple ink style intro that I knocked up in about 10 minutes. first fragrance is not in the list, it's actually an honourable mention, and it is called Oud Galib by Ardal Zafaran. Really, really straightforward pitch with this. If you like fragrances like Ragba by La Taffa or 24 Gold, this is pretty much the same DNA, although it doesn't go sweet, it goes woody, spicy and incensey. So it's taking the original formula of those two fragrances, but it takes it in a new direction, which is fantastic. Number 10 is from the house of Maison Margiela, and this is Across Sands. This is a, this is a crazy one. Uh, it smells like barbecue smoke uh, and sugary dates, and I absolutely love it. The first half an hour of this is extraordinarily synthetic. You feel as though you're fighting an uphill battle to get to the promised land, which is this really unique, um, smokier uh, barbecue smoke, like I said, with this intense sweetness, and it's like you take those two worlds, you collide them, and you get something really interesting and quite unique. Unfortunately, the budget of Maison Margiela really shines in this one. Like I said, it's synthetic. I'd love to see Zerjoff um, try and take a whip at this concept. I think they'd be really good at that. But, like I said, it's on the list, it's quite good, and I'd recommend it. Number nine is a fragrance that if you've been subscribing to me for a little while, uh, you'll recognize this immediately. It's Golden Boy from the House of Duetto. This one has been slowly um, weaving its way back into, uh, into my rotation, uh, into my heart, really. I truly love it. It's funny because I originally bought this as a Tuscan leather alternative, right? Because this kind of does the inverse to Tuscan leather of what this does to Ragburn 24 Gold. Um, this thing, of course, adds the the more sort of abrasive and harsher elements like the spices, the woods, the oud. Um, this Golden Boy kind of takes 
the leather and the harsher elements of Tuscan leather and tones them down and adds more sugar, right? And that's really appealing. It's not a clone. If you're buying this as a Tuscan leather clone, you'll be sorely disappointed because you're gonna get something completely different out of it. I can wear this to certain situations I couldn't wear Tuscan leather to. It's funny though, with all the reformulations and the Estee Lauder takeover, I was uh, joking to Peter from Fragrance View, this now smells more like Tuscan leather than Tuscan leather does. You know, because this has still got that oomph, Duetto are known for their power, for their performance, for their presence. Um, very, very big, very, very beastly. So this is definitely one to check out. I did a review of it uh, a few years ago. It's okay, I rewatched it. If I'm honest, I would go to uh, Manny from Cascade Sense overview of Duetto. He had some really good and kind words to say about it. So check that out. My number eight is from a fragrance house that I should have talked about a long, long time ago and I can only apologize for that. And that is Imaginary Authors. This one is Memoirs of a Trespasser. Such an interesting brand. I do love it when fragrance houses try to borrow from other art forms, a la Renier Perfumes. There is one of those on this list. Um, they, of course, borrow from paintings. Uh, this one is from, well, Imaginary Authors. Such an interesting and unique concept. I blind bought this this year simply because I thought to myself, George, you've got to know about this brand. You've really got to go for it. I didn't even um, get a, disco a discovery set. I just saw the vanilla one and was like, "Wumph!" I'm a huge fan of vanilla, probably because of childish reasons. It reminds me of vanilla ice cream um, and everybody loves that, right? Um, so I've got quite a few vanillas already in my collection as it is. This one still stands out. This one has got Madagascan vanilla, which surprised me because when I first smelt it, I thought it was Mexican vanilla because Mexican vanilla is typically smoky. And what this is like, this reminds me a little bit of Andy Towers' work, especially with his Towerville line, right? And Andy Towers' um, work, usually he has like this sandpaper note, like woodshop woodwork kind of note in a lot of his Towerville um, fragrances that smells like sandpaper, that smells as though you've been working in a wood shop for several days. And I think that's really, really cool and really, really interesting. Uh, and this has that, but then you, what you realize is you couldn't, it smells like Mexican vanilla because it is a bit smoky, but it's not, it's Madagascan. And it has to be that because that sweetness heavily contrasts with the more sandier wood shaving smell that's going on. It smells very hipstery and I wear it when I want to put the turtleneck on and, you know, come across a bit more educated, you know, intellectual, hipstery, you know, um, mostly to, to make myself more obtainable because, you know, usually I just come across as like a supermodel, super jacked, you know, sex god. And sometimes, you know, I just want to break from that. It also has a tone of like, you're in a library and you're reading a really old book with like old, like weathered pages. It's got that as well, along with sweetness. It's really fantastic. Josh Meyer is a super talented dude. I'm looking forward to trying all of the imaginary authors. Um, he's got a great mind um, and just fantastic. Some of you probably knew that this house would be in here, but it's not the fragrance that you might think it is. It's called Oud Rain from the house of Rainier Perfumes. So of course I adore Kisses Rain so, so much. Love it, did a great review of that. You could go check it out. So this is the latest one. Uh, they've got a new one coming out next year, but this is one that was sent to me for free in about April or May, and I didn't review it. And I do, honestly, I apologize so much to Rainier, but there was so much going on, traveling and starting the, the new film business that I've got going. It was just hectic, it couldn't be done. This is really, really interesting. I'm just gonna say a little bit about it, which is, it's quite wild, which of course I would expect from Rainier. They're, they're very artistic in what they do, but there's kind of a bit of an issue with it. Okay, so you spray this on, the opening is wild. It's absolutely amazing, 10 out of 10. It's like it's like a Creed opening or a Zerjoff opening, right? It's really, really strong, really natural. Um, really, there's a lot of attention to detail. So you spray it on and you get mango, like you've just freshly cut open a mango but you've also got like um, a little glass of thick mango juice. So you've got the richness from the mango juice, but you've also got like the, the watery, um, oxygenated, um, 
freshly cut mango, right, which is a little bit lighter than the juice. So you've got those two elements together and it's intoxicating. It's amazing. And you think to yourself, my God, this is going to be an amazing summer fragrance. Right? And then 15, 20 minutes later, it turns into this kind of harsher, um, muskier, powdery oud that can be worn in autumn and winter. And you're like, what? Like, well, what's this supposed to be? Is this a summer fragrance, spring, like a spring, or is it autumn, winter? So, I mean, it's incredible in one way. I'm, I'm super impressed. I've never smelled a fragrance that has been able to go from like a 10 out of 10 summer fragrance all the way down to a deep down uh, autumn, wintry fragrance. I've never seen that. It's a, a miracle of modern perfume engineering, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, but it causes a problem which is, well, I'm, I'm kind of uncertain as I can see more when I want to wear this. The only thing that I can say is I haven't worn this in spring. And when it does go to that um, darker Ouda tone, it still has the mango that keeps everything refreshed and keeps everything kind of interesting. I wouldn't necessarily say light, but it gives it a refreshing undertone, which is really, really cool, really interesting. So I can imagine that this could dominate in spring, but if you can just get past those 15 minutes with the starburst like mango, uh, this is really good in colder weather as well. It's a bit wild. I definitely want to do a full on review of it, but fantastic. Number six, well, I would argue that this is not a Fragrance Apprentice list, winter top 10 list, unless you have this bad boy in here. Potion Royal Black. I did a great review of this um, a while ago. I was very proud of that review because I think that I did really well with the technical details, but it was the first kind of Fragrance Apprentice review where I added the elements of like comedy and, and theatrics and stuff like that, which is kind of what I'm known for now. So that was kind of like a milestone review. Um, so I remember that with a lot of fondness. And this fragrance, that was that review was probably three, yeah, about three years ago, maybe even four, but it still sticks with me. I still think it's a fantastic fragrance, and especially on the price point, which is about 60, 70 pounds. This is fantastic. It's it's wonderful. It's it's syrupy. It's leathery. Uh, it's a beast performance wise. It cuts through the cold weather. Um, I still love it to bits, guys. And. Um, so I'd, I'd just go and watch that review to get caught up. The only amendment that I'd make is that I think I undersold the rose a little bit. I think this has got a really powerful um, rose that I didn't completely detect when I reviewed it originally, mainly because I didn't quite get what this type of rose, this type of Turkish rose was supposed to smell like. So if you can go in to that review with that amendment in mind, that reviews still holds up today. So this is number six, top 10 winter. Number five is a beast, a colossus, a monster. It is a legend. It is Oud Satin Mood from the house of Francis Maison, Francis Kerjan. Now, it's been kind of trendy recently to kind of hate on Francis Kerjan, uh, but I think that, you know, you can really hate anything, uh, hate on anything that's popular or that's been around for a, a while. And um, I'm not saying that he hasn't done any duds, he certainly has. And in my opinion, he kind of oversaturates his own market. But every now and then, um, he will release something that reminds us that he is truly uh, something special as a perfumier. It's something he was born to do. You know, he's been doing this for a very long time, since he was a very young man. And this is one of his masterpieces. It's such a straightforward composition, but done so well. Only the masters can really do uh, straightforward stuff exceptionally well. Oud, a huge hunk of vanilla and rose. And there's something kind of foody about it. There's something chocolatey uh, and it has kind of like an alcohol aesthetic. Ultimately, it sort of reminds me, especially in the opening and, and the top of the fragrance, it reminds me of those um, chocolate uh, sweets that you actually usually get around about wintertime or Christmas, where you bite into them and you get like an alcoholic liqueur uh, in the center of them. It has that kind of vibe. As it goes through the progression of the fragrance, it does turn quite feminine. It does turn into kind of like a, a, a feminine um, Terry Mugler-esque style uh, gourmand fragrance, but I don't completely mind that. But the, the top, the opening is so insane. And I just want to point something out. 
if we zoom in here, you can see it looks as though I haven't actually used a lot. Trust me, I have. I've had this for two years, but this thing is a beast. Number four is from the house of Tom Ford, and that is, it's a little bit played out these days, but it's Tobacco Vini. Um, <laughs> man, this just reminds me of Christmas completely, 100%. Um, I've had the, I mean, I mean, I understand that it's kind of been played out a little bit, but uh, I've had this only for about eight or nine months, but for the past few years, I've always got myself a five to 10 milliliter decant that I'd wear on Christmas day, because it reminds me of Christmas, and now it's vice versa, and by wearing it on Christmas, it reminds me even more of Christmas. But why it reminded me of Christmas kind of originally, is because, and I've never really seen this talked about with Tobacco Bene, but I'll be brief, and that is, it reminds me a lot of um, European style food and drink. As in, there's a lot of desserts or pastries that have the same taste or a similar kind of taste to how Tobacco Bene smells. A lot of pastries you'll get in uh, Estonia, Romania, Denmark especially, has that kind of uh, has this kind of style, but the biggest one for me is there's a a drink here in the UK in Scotland, Scottish drink called Dram Bui, and that really tastes how this smells. So there's a lot of spices, there's honey, it's a, kind of a liqueur, and I I see that proliferated throughout a lot of delicacies around Europe that have a similar kind of style to this as a smell. So I don't I've never really seen that talked about a lot, uh, and I would love to explore that. Uh, one day in a future review. Number three is a fragrance that I really truly love. Um, I got it this year. It's called Fortitude from the House of Robert Graham. So oh man, there's there's a lot to talk about with this one. A lot to talk about. I will have to do a review. Um, there's so much. There's so so much going on because it reminds me of like a mishmash of a lot of extremely popular. Um, compliment getting fragrances such as uh, Reflection Man, there's a bit of that in here, Le Nuit de Lom by Yves Saint Laurent, that's in here as well, and Spice Bomb by Victor and Rolf. There's a lot of different things going in. Um, it's not a clone or anything like that, it's got its own story, um, but it's really interesting, really, really has caught me off guard. Uh, I, I can't wait to talk about it, but this one to me is a rising star. And it has a sandy undertone as well, uh, which kind of reminded me of Egypt. And I was thinking about like, oh, I've got to do a Fragrance Apprentice style um, review, you know, insane cinematic elaborate review in Egypt. It's never been done before, never been done before. Anyway, speaking to P Peter from Fragrance, he's already bloody done it with a House of Matriarch fragrance. Damn it. Damn it, Peter, for traveling and having skills and being good. Lots to talk about this one. If you can, I would do some investigating yourself on this one. For me, this is something that could uh, could go places. Fortitude by Robert Graham. Number two, I'm just going to cut straight to the chase. It's Royal Lude by Creed. I was so wrong about this fragrance. I was so wrong. I gave this a lukewarm reception when it came into my life, and I thought, yeah, it's good. And I originally did a summer nights out review of it, which was which was decent. But this is. This is amazing. It's so captivating, and it has been my most complimented fragrance of 2019. People just gravitate towards this. I'm so sad because Creed, when they released Viking, they were like, this is the successor, the one true successor to um, Aventus, but it wasn't really. This was, this came out a year after Aventus, and it's been getting more compliments off of me now than Aventus does because, well, to be completely honest, everybody wears Aventus these days, everybody. So this has a uniqueness. And this has a similar thing to like what I said with Oud Wood in that review, which is this has that classical, um, caustic, masculine um, smell that a lot of fragrances, uh, modern fragrances are missing today. There's not a lot of sweetness. And if it is, it's extraordinarily well balanced. You know. Creed, Olivier Creed, the family, they're so talented, they're incredible, and um, they just, the, the bar is raised so high, unfortunately so are the fucking prices, but that's another thing, that's something that I've all, you know, continue to have um, a problem with that, but Royal Oud by Creed is the true successor to Aventus, the only problem is, is that Aventus 
only started becoming Aventus around about the time this came out, so this was grossly overshadowed. Pe more people need to give Royal Oud the attention that it deserves because it really, really engages people and is such a well-made, fantastic fragrance and is extraordinarily powerful in winter. My number one, well, you've probably been looking for this fragrance. You probably thought, well, it's got to be in here if it isn't number one. It is in here and it is still number one. It's Fev. Oh, I mean, look how much I've used of it. <laughs> and it's been reformulated, right? So that's just oh, terrifying, terrifying times. Um, <laughs> I want to talk about my number ones in general here. What makes a fragrance kind of a number one for me is a, a fragrance that I feel has my back, that really sets the tone for what I want to convey as a person in an interaction with another human being or how I interact with the world in general. This is so inviting. The chocolatey praline thing is just out of this world. It just, I, I really feel as though it aligns with who I am and it projects such a great first impression out to people. And that is of a warm, loving, caring, you know, great human being. It takes people a whole five minutes to realize that I'm actually an asshole. Go and see me swoon over this with uh, the review that I did with Dave. Uh, great review, uh, both he and I loved it and I still love it to this day and it, and it is, it's just my number one, it's my go-to. So there you have it, my top 10 winter list of 2019. I hope you've had a wonderful Christmas. I hope that you have a fantastic new year and um, I'll see you next year for season five. Cheers.